series that probably mm -hmm. cemented my faith and my knowledge and my faith journey is still growing um, of what God intended from Old Testament to New Testament. And that was um, a real plus in my life. So that's my faith journey. I'm going to let Sue share a little bit on hers then. And we will leave some time for questions too. So, Although we do talk a lot, so you may have <laughs> no. But the sermon say, listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mine is somewhat similar to Mary's too in the start. I grew up by Archer, Iowa in a small... Or, on a farm, um, went to church from probably day five or whatever, you know, I just always did. Um, the story is there was one time I had told my mom I didn't feel good and I thought I should stay home. And um, she said, no, you should go to church. And I turned around and vomited out of the back of pew um, and said, see, I told you I was sick. I don't remember that. One of my oldest friends who still, you know, who I grew up with does remember that. So anyway, yeah, went to church. Um, in a good Christian family, church camp is probably where I made the first decision um, to have Christ as my Savior. And I went home and I told my mom that, and I, my family and everything. And then probably about four months later, she was driving me back from volleyball um, practice. And she said, you know, consistory's meeting tonight. Do you want to go? And so I really have to thank my mom for pushing that next step to make that public profession Okay. Um, grew up in the church, or grew up in, in high school, I was able to do mentorships. I always wanted to do something with science, so I went to the hospital, to the lab, and did a couple afternoons there and, and enjoyed it, but there isn't a lot of interaction with people who are really alert. Um, you know, <laughs> taking blood at 6.30 in the morning or whatever, they weren't so. Um, I then went and did a mentorship at Village Northwest Unlimited, in the physical therapy department and fell in love with the profession. Um, I currently don't do a lot in that same vein of what we had done in physical therapy at the village, but it introduced me to the profession, introduced me to working with a variety of people and fell in love with it. Went to Northwestern, always planning to go into physical therapy, got a biology degree, applied to physical therapy school, and the year that I applied, I think Prof Mullenberg was shocked. I think, well, there were five of us that had applied for physical therapy school. To get five students in at that time was a struggle. Um, three made it into the University of Iowa. I made it into a brand new program in Des Moines at Des Moines University and was set to go a week before finals, got the letter that they were waiting a year to start. So I had this year on my own, and that was a struggle, you know, for, to go, God, I am ready to go. Why did you, you know, why do you give me this year? It was probably the best year that he could have given me at that time. Um, gave me time to just relax from studying um, for a year. I got to watch the Olympics and not have to worry about it. <laughs> so, and um, twins won that super, the um, World Series that year, too. So it allowed me to watch TV and not have to go, should I study? Should I watch TV? But anyway. Um, you have a twins thing in front of your house, don't you? Yeah. A flag or it, something? It's down now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's uh, twins uh, attire whenever they're playing. So well, you not know when the twins playing. are playing. Yeah. But anyway, then I did go to Des Moines um, that next year to go to school. And, and that was really, that was good. I was totally on my own. Um, family was not you know, it was four hours away. It was a very good growing experience. And I found a really um, small, pretty blue collar church on the south side of Des Moines, Calvary Reform, um, that I went to and was very involved there. And so that was another bit of God finding the right place for me to worship and to, to grow and to be active. Um, and yes, same thing. I did some work with Mark Hulst when I was in college and he recruited me to come back here, um, which my five-year plan was to work in a big hospital and then come back in five years to Northwest Iowa once I had a lot of experience. Well, I just, God just jumped that five-year plan, and I went right away to year six here in, North, in Northwest Iowa um, and worked in Orange City. And a lot of different things at that point, again, first apart, or you know, being totally on my own, no roommates or anything, and started to figure out which church I should attend. We were vacant, Archer Reform was vacant at that time, and I decided 
I still wanted to kind of make a decision on who they would call for their next pastor. So I started going back to Archer, and 30 years later, I'm still going back to church in Archer, um, which is nice. It's a small one. It's the church I grew up in, and I can be very active and, and um, play some roles in that church. They let me use some of the gifts that I have in ways that, that are needed. Um, and yeah, the therapy has been great to just meet with a lot of different people and, and we have a great office of people to work with and part of it is Mary who's right next door. <laughs> so yeah, God is still working it all the time in my life and at different, you know, different stages, different ways. You know, uh, one of the questions they asked, how does faith matter, you know, in my job? Does it matter that I have a faith um, to be able to do my job? Um, and maybe everybody doesn't know what, what our job is. You know, our job is to um, help people that are sent to us um, by doctors. Uh, sometimes they come on their own too. We can see people without having them go to a doctor. Kind of depends on insurance. Um, so our job is to help them whatever they need. It might be somebody that has fallen down and is hurt um, and they want to get better. Maybe they have, most of them come and they have some pain. Um, sometimes it might be uh, somebody that they want to be able to do um, a job and so they come and we evaluate, can they do that job? Or do they need to be stronger or something like that? Um, so there's just a variety of reasons why people end up coming to us, but does it matter that I have a faith? For me, um, you know, where my faith matters is that I want to be like Jesus. I want to be a servant to my patients. I want to serve them. I want to help them. And that's, I think, where my faith uh, comes in strong for me as far as my job goes, um, that I want to be their servant. I want to help them. Um, I don't look at them as just, okay, if I see 10 patients today, that's more money for the hospital. That's more money for me. I don't, I don't want that. Um, do we have to watch the money? Yes, we do, but not. Brad's got to do that the most, so I we don't have to worry about that so much. If I had my way, I wouldn't charge anybody. I would just have people come, and I'd help them to get better, and um, and that's what I'd, I'd like to do. Um, but I want to serve them, you know, but sometimes my knowledge is limited. There's There you have things that I can't necessarily help with. But, like Sue said, we have a great office, a great office of uh, Christian people, too, who have beliefs, as I do, and a faith that we're not, we're not the end all, and that God is the one that has to help us. And there's, to be real truthful, there's sometimes when I don't know, always know what to do, and I'll say, Jesus, just help me to do something to make them feel better. And then from there, sometimes he shows me the way to go. Say, okay, now try this and that sometimes. But my faith does matter because I want to serve my patients. I totally agree with that. And, and um, the other thing that I, we had, I think about 10 years ago, you'd get a really interesting group of patients throughout the day. Um, and I would always remind myself, these are all children of God. And so I need to treat them um, the way God would treat them. And so, you know, if their feet are a little smelly or their language is a little brusque or, you know, something like that, it's still, you know, I might be the only, you know, I might be the only Christian person that they see on a certain regular basis. So I need to do what I can do to show them God's love. Um, you know, one thing that's kind of unique about our uh, position, uh, what we do is, you know, there's some people that we may see one time. Uh, that's the only, and that's the only chance we get to um, help them or um, show our love for them. Or, and some people we see forever. Um, so um, that's uh, that's that's good, and sometimes that's bad. But it does give us the opportunity to get very involved in their life. Um, and one thing that I've noticed as a PT, and uh, one thing that we do that might be a little bit unique is that we a lot touch people. I mean, we have to assess their muscles, we have to assess where their pain is, so we're constantly touching. And I think when you touch people, 
they respond back to you. Um, when we do uh, myofascial manual therapy, where we do a lot of hands-on, people relax and loosen, and sometimes it just, then the conversations are, they, they share. They share a lot with us. And I, I, I feel that as a privilege to know that they trust us enough to share that with us. And not only do they share about their hurts from their, their sore calf muscle or whatever, but sometimes it hurts in their heart. And so, I, you know, I, I pray to God that I can help to um, lessen that hurt of their heart if I can. So I have to do a lot of listening, too, to know um, where, where, where can I help. Because sometimes um, physical pain is related a lot to emotional pain, too. And sometimes that is maybe more what we try. And, um, and I'm not a Dr. Phil, you know, I'm not going to be a Dr. Phil. But we do have to listen a lot to see where we can go. And, you know, in PT, and we have to have goals. And I try and set goals that um, I think, you know, I think you could make this goal, but they'd also have to be a goal they want to, to make, too. So we, we work in <laughs> together um, in that. Um, 30 years ago when I was in PT school, they had, at that point, the average time that a PT spent with a patient during a session was 30 minutes. A doctor was eight. So, uh, and, and that's just the difference in the profession. Nothing wrong with the medical doctors. They're looking at labs, they're looking at everything. We are directly one on one a lot of times with people. So, we do get that time to build up that rapport with them that they feel safe <coughs> with us. Um, and yeah, as Mary said, a lot of that physical pain is also emotionally related. So, sometimes just talking about it is all that someone needs to start to feel better. Um, some of the unique challenges, you know, that we we do have, I think, in our, our profession is that a lot of times we're not only just treating the patient, um, but we're treating a family too. Because um, how does the, the disability, which some disabilities can be short term, um, a calf strain. We can fix that. They can go back. They can probably go back to work. They can go back to what they want to do. But some of the people that we see have disabilities that, that don't get fixed totally. They don't go back to normal. And so we have to help them. We have to help their family to see the positives and what they have um, and then help the family to figure out how can we make this work? Um, are we going to have to change a lot of stuff or can we, we make it work? And also, um, and one of the reasons I um, probably gravitated more to PT because I thought people weren't going to die so much. Well, that's not true because they still do die. And it's like, so sometimes we have, you know, end of life things, hospice things that we, we have to help people with. And um, so that, that's, that's a unique challenge in itself too. And, um, and of course, you know, since March uh, with the whole COVID thing, it has been a, a greater challenge because now whenever we're with patients, um, our outpatients, we have to wear a mask. So no longer can they see our face so much, they see our eyes. Um, and so you have to be, and we've really tried, and Brad's been very good to say, hey, you know what, smile with your eyes because they need to see smiles. People need to see smiles. Um, and sometimes, you know, our elderly people, they'll say, what'd you say? And it's like, oh, you know, so that is a real challenge. And then um, I do uh, more of the inpatient work. That's just how it, it's kind of set up now. And unfortunately, since March, um, most of our patients initially couldn't have any visitors. So we were, if we, they had PT, we were the kind of their visitor of the day. So that was a, a unique challenge. And um, and especially, you know, with COVID people too, um, they're sick and they're weak. And not just with COVID, but others. And then, so it is a challenge um, to accomplish, to get them stronger when they feel so bad. So those are kind of the unique challenges um, that I see in my job that has stretched my faith to know, you know, God, why all this now? Um, you know, why can't we just get people better and it go away, you know? Um, but it's not. So um, that's the unique challenges I see now. Some of the other challenges are when you know what will make someone move better, feel better, and they don't want to take it and do it themselves. They want to come in and have you just make them better. Um, and that doesn't work. For most of us, it's a daily 
you know, stretching or exercise routine or something like that. And so my frustration sometimes is when it's like, I know what you need to get better, you just won't do it, you know? Um, and that's, that's not the right attitude for me to have. Um, so just to continue to teach them what is a good way. And that, you know, obviously that must be God saying, Sue, I know what you need to do to live a better life, but you just won't do it. You know, so that same type of deal. So it does remind me, um, you know, that we still get to make those decisions and we don't always make good ones. And as I look back over my years, you know, was there a time when my faith uh, was uh, not only just by the, the challenges I just talked about, but was my faith um, challenged um, in my work? Um, and I, I told you that I, I lived in Sibley, that Lyle and I moved there first, and I worked for a company out of Joliet, Illinois, um, rehab services in America, who had contracts, which was quite common in this area of Northwest Iowa because there weren't a lot of, Mark was the only PT, there was another guy that was at the, the village, um, CJ Verbruggi, I believe was his, was his name. So, and um, those were the two guys that were out here doing PT. So, um, so companies like a big company out of Joliet, Illinois came and said, well, oh, we'll provide therapists. So they hired new grad me and stuck me up in Sibley and said, okay, bye, have fun doing it. And I'm like, okay. So a lot of it, what I did was just like, okay, God, show me what to do on this. And I went from Sibley to Rock Valley every day. And thank God he got me there every day. Only once did I go in the ditch. And uh, it was a snowy. I was coming back from Rock Valley because I'd start <coughs> Sibley, go to Rock Valley, see patients, and then go back to Sibley. It was snowy on the way, but I wanted to get home. So I got, and I got just outside of Rock Valley, and there, the, the, deep, the dips, deep ditches are deep on that side. I slid in there, and I was like, oh, great. What am I going to do? Well, me being the farmer girl I am, I walked, dropped right up to the next farm. I said, could you get your tractor and pull me out? And they did, thank, thankfully. Um, but um, so I worked for them for two years, and then I was pregnant with Andrew, actually having Andrew, and the company called me. And they talked to my aide at that time, and she said, well, she's having a baby. And they said, we'll call her tomorrow. <laughs> she said, that'd be good. That'd be good. So they called me the next day, and I'm in the hospital with Andrew in my arms. Um, and they said, well, we've dropped the contract with Sibley. We no longer need to have you employed by us. I said, okay. Um, but I didn't feel like I was... I was gonna, it was the worst thing in the world, you know? Obviously I had this new baby and it was like, okay. Um, so I said, okay, you know? <laughs> um, but then uh, a month later I got sick and I had to stay on some insurance because I couldn't get on Lyle's insurance. I had to stay on their insurance and pay for it. Then I was like, well, okay, God, this is a little bit of stretch for me. But God came through and um, I got a job at River Valley um, and I worked there two days a week, and fortunately, that allowed me with my uh, what I had that I could work and rest and work and rest, and it worked well. And I had a husband, and I Andrew was born in June, so I had the whole summer with Lyle taking care of Andrew uh, for me to recover. So God definitely worked in my life and helped my faith to become stronger in Him um, at that time. Just lots of, you know, I'm, I feel, both of us, I think, feel very blessed of what we get to do with the people we get to meet. Um, there was somebody one time I had worked with, you know, you can work pretty intensely with, you know, three times a week for a month, and you've seen that person a lot. Um, and in the process, so a lot of things happened, and about six months later, I was talking to someone who was a friend of this person's spouse, and I said, well, how is she doing? Because and different things, and we got talking, they said, you must know them very well, and I thought, no, I know, I get a snippet of their life, I get to be a big part of their life for just a short time, um, most of the time, but I'm very blessed to have that experience with a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I, I wouldn't do anything different looking back to say, would I do a different job? No, 
I, I enjoy my job um, immensely. Uh, God has blessed me through it. Um, I didn't know that uh, Sue had, and I know Sue pretty well. Sue was, we went to the same high school. Um, she was a few years younger than me, but not many, but <laughs> just a few years younger than me. So, um, but she was at the village. I didn't know that. And I, um, I didn't share that, but I spent 30 years at the village too. And to work with people that have a disability uh, long-term, it, it does, um, it's, it is a lot of faith for them um, to, to trust us and to care for them. Um, and that is a challenge in itself. But God was with me through that too and blessed me with very many people that, um, I, that's why I stayed for 30 years because I could just never quit there because I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't leave them. You know, do you, oh, oh, I was just saying something else I thought of earlier that I forgot. It's really ways that my faith has been challenged too, is I remember treating different people, um, a gentleman who has passed away now, who is very strong Christian Catholic gentleman. And we would have talks like you said, okay, in the Catholic church, we have seven sacraments. What do you have in the Reformed church? Um, and, and so those would be things that would make me really put in, to you know the theology of the Reformed Church, but to then for me to be able to explain to him and why I believed in some of those things. Um, I've had some Muslim patients through the years, which have been fabulous to just talk about my faith and their faith and differences and things like that. So sometimes there's a couple of therapists in our office who maybe don't always gravitate to those situations. Those are kind of, I enjoy, um, being able to talk about different things like that with my patients too. Do you guys have any uh, questions for us? Mary, you said something about that at sometimes you're involved with the hospice end of things. Uh, what did you mean by that? In what kind of way? Um, well, uh, with a hospice patient, um, a lot of times uh, PT gets involved. You think, well, why are you involved with people that are dying? Well, sometimes the goal of a hospice is to maybe stay in their home. And maybe to be able to stay in their home, they want to be able to get to the bathroom, that their spouse or their family can get to the bath, get them just to the bathroom. So we will go in and work with them on some exercises to see what can we do to help you maybe to maintain some strength so you can do that, or what can we help you figure out how to get to the bathroom. You know, is it, can we get a lift in the home? Do we get a commode beside the bed? But what we can do there. So that's kind of what we do right. with a, a hospice patient is to just, if what their goal is, whether it be at home or whatever, if that's where they want to be, that we, we can come in and help them to, to do that. Okay, thank you. Mary's a very good MacGyver. <laughs> she can take anything almost and put it together and make things work. <laughs> And that was uh, the unique thing that I did a lot of at the village was with wheelchair. Because, you know, for the people that couldn't walk, you wanted them to have mobility. So we, we did a lot about with that. But they also are um, Wreck-It Ralphs, you know, that uh, they use and abuse their wheelchairs. So there's often, an, um, and some on purpose, too, you know, and they I go on Tuesdays and... Uh, they say, oh, Mary, you got to look because it's hanging on the side. And it was like, okay, what can we do? Um, you know, and it was interesting at the village. I always went on Tuesdays. And it was like, if I go, would go any other day other than Tuesday, it, it threw the whole place off. They'd be, you're not supposed to be here. But after 30 years of Tuesdays, that was, that was hard. And when I left there, my Tuesdays still seem way, way different because I'm used to 30, 30 years of Tuesdays at the village too, so... I've been able to go with Hope Haven a couple times to distribute wheelchairs, and Mary really needs to be the one that does because she can she can finagle much better than I can. But that's been a, a little benefit of being a physical therapist is that they always take physical therapists along when they distribute, so they will get different ones to volunteer. So wheelchairs aren't my specialty, but I learned from Mary a little bit. You know, and I think that's what you know. God in all of our professions opens doors for us uh, to show our faith to and, and whatever we do. And, and sometimes it's the unexpected things that happen or somebody comes in or a patient that it's like, oh, 
okay, God, you put this person in my life for a reason, um, you know, and help me through that, you know. And, you know, there's some days when you do have 10 patients and you're pulled over, you know, and, and it's like, what, uh, what? You know, and then the next one calls and says, well, I can't come in because of this. You feel bad that they're sick, but it's like, okay, God, you've given me that little chance to get caught up on something else. So he, you know, there's so many ways that he is with me throughout the day and helps me with, with what I do. What about getting the patient you really don't want? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're really reminded that they have a place in God's kingdom and you need to figure out where that place is. But <laughs> um, yeah, that can kind of be a struggle sometimes. And, and you know, every personalities have different, uh, that mesh. And so um, it, sometimes it's like, okay, it's just your turn, you know. Um, other times it's like, and then sometimes people request, and you can do that. You can ask for a specific therapist, because sometimes you do just mesh better. But, you know, I, we don't turn anybody away, and uh, we've got enough in our group, which is fortunate that we can, even those patients that are like, eh, we still see them, and we still do our best for them. So, Because God says God loves all little children, and so we're going to love all our patients, too. I had an orthopedic uh, doctor say to me one time that physical therapists aren't necessarily your friends. I think, Sue, you kind of spoke to that. You know, there's, there's potential in, for many people to get better if Just keep encouraging. Just keep encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I will say to people, especially like after a total week, you will not like me mm -hmm. for the next month, but after that, mm -hmm. then you will you will understand why we did what we did. So, yeah, sometimes it's just keep in and keep going, keep going, keep going. With that smile on your face under that mask. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and that brings up too, because uh, we do have uh, work comp injuries where. You know, that isn't always the most uh, fun thing for them to do, especially if they're not real happy in their job and then they're having pain in their job. And so those are a unique challenge to um, help them to get back to uh, being able to provide for their family. And um, how do we encourage them, you know, and to, to do that? I'm a compliment, both of you, but, but we're... Having been a patient of both of you <laughs> uh, over the years and, and just being in the, the therapy department, I think you guys do a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, Sue and I are kind of the old people on the block. At our, well, and I am the old person over there, you know, after Mark was gone, then I am the old person. And we do have now... Um, a group of younger therapists, um, and it is a mentoring aspect of it too. And and you know, I don't know if in your work situation, but things are changing. You know, what I did when I came out of PT school, we don't even do anymore. You know, um, like it or told me, they just we just had a, a one that she, you know, she said, "Oh, my knee feels stiff." I said, "When I came out of school, we put everybody in the knee immobilizer for six weeks, and then they had to come to PT." Oh. They did not like us at all. They hated us. Um, so things have changed, to, some to the good. Um, some, I'm not so sure, so to good. Some of our um, need for documentation and uh, insurance, what we have to, to do to get visits for people um, is, is difficult and challenging uh, to be able to do. That's why I just want to have a free clinic where everybody can come and you know, we can just do it, do it that way. Um, so those are, you know, unique challenges that, that Sue and I face as we mentor our younger therapists and um, help them along that way. Anything else? Going? Going? I was wondering if Sue would share a story from one of her trips with Paul oh. David, a special 
instance where you really felt that it was in one of the trips. Repeat that for me. Um, she was asking if I had a special story from one of my trips with Hope Haven to Romania. Have you gone twice? I've gone twice. This should have been probably my, I usually kind of go every other year, and this should have been my year, but um, obviously with everything going on, we are not going right now. I'm trying to think of a really, there, there was a, probably the one that sticks out most, it was my first year there. There was a, a woman who brought her son to be fit for a chair, and luckily they had done some prelim work because there was no way we could have done this one on the fly. Um, he, you never know for sure what their diagnosis is, but when he came in, he was, his feet were like this, I don't know if you can see, so his right leg, was, his left foot, or his right foot was on his left side, and his left foot was on his right side. Um, and so to try to fit a foot plate or anything for that would have been, it, you know, terribly hard to do right at the time, but they had kind of worked some stuff out, and we just mainly did some fine tuning on it. But just the fact that she had carried him around for 18 years, wherever he went. Um, and so just, you know, that was just amazing. The joy, the look on her face that she would not have to carry this 18-year-old. And he was 18. He looked more like eight, you know, the size-wise, um, around with, you know, all the time um, was just amazing. Just to see that, you know, that joy on their face, to know that something so simple as getting them a wheelchair made such a difference in their life. And, you know, just to, you know, to be very thankful that God gave us the resources to be able to, to share that with them. Yeah, there's a lot of fun things. I, you know, Romania is just a, a I, I fell in love, I like that part of the world, that Eastern Europe, and it's just really neat. Um, there. The other interesting thing that isn't necessarily to do with PT, but just being in Romania, that always just amazed me was, even though it was under communist rule for how many years, my history isn't that great, but for quite a while, as you drive by, there are religious icons throughout the country from when it was a really strong Greek or Orthodox, I think it's Greek Orthodox, throughout that area. So it's amazing that even though communism was in there for so long, they could not destroy all of that and how when, you know, the communists, when Ceausescu got um, overthrown in 90, you know, how the church was there um, that had been, you know, quiet for so long because they couldn't be out in the open, but it was still there. So that was kind of a neat working of, you know, seeing faith in action at that time. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mary and Susan, for coming. I appreciate you uh, sharing from your heart and, and your experiences. That's exactly what uh, we wanted to hear. And you've been refined by fire and probably will continue to be refined by fire. And I thank you uh, to you folks coming uh, next week, the congregational meeting, and then we will proceed with uh, three other guests after that. So blessings and to go in peace.